Hi there, I'm Tiffany. I wanna share with you a few projects that have been going on in my fish room and with my aquariums. I was um, planning to add a new tank to the living room and was very concerned about the noise. So I wanted to share with you some changes that have been going on and my new tank. But actually behind me are two new tanks, not just one. I thought I was gonna set up a 90 gallon or something about that size and it ended up with 90 gallons in two tanks. This top tank that you see here is 50 gallons. Uh, the one below it that you can't see, I'll show you in a minute, is 40 breeder. I really like this three foot um, tank, the three foot length. I think it's a, a great size. It's very flexible. Uh, most of my tanks are 20 gallons. I have a 60 cube that right now is my biggest tank. But as I was preparing to set up these tanks, I became very concerned about noise in the living room and whatever noise that the air pumps or filtration, whatever filters would make. So um, made some changes to pretty much all of my tanks and wanted to show you some things I've done to help make these tanks and some of my other tanks quieter. So this is my 50 gallon tank. Right now it has three koi angels. It has about 10 of these Kerry Tetras, the Emperor Tetra that's kind of purple, purpley. I think that's probably a male right there. See how bright that one is compared to the others? Um, and then there's also these Violet Corys. I typically go by common names and that's what I call, what I know them as the Violet Corys. So, I just set this tank up a few months ago. It has not been set up very long, but I really love this um, footprint, but I could not decide and I ended up putting a tank under. So these are stacked. So this is a 40 breeder. These have the same footprint. They're three feet long, 18 inches deep. Then the 40 breeder I think is 16 tall. The 50 gallon is uh, 18 inches tall. So. Uh, in this bottom tank, I have about a dozen dwarf neon rainbows. They're kind of small, but you can see even at their small size, they still are very pretty and have uh, quite a lot of color, some of them. There's also um, about 18 rummy nose tetras. Now these are hopefully going to one day go into a larger tank, but right now they're fine. They're, uh, the rainbow fish especially are growing out. They're really not that, lo that large yet, so. Okay, then we have some Julii Corys that are not very active right now, but they like this corner and that's where they are. Um, the rummy nose are on the move. Sometimes these guys are schooling together. It's kind of crazy, but these two tanks are in my living room and they are the first tanks I have set up in the living room. So I was very concerned about noise. So each of these tanks has a Zis filter and a small sponge filter. So let me show, show you what I ended up doing to try to, com try to control the noise. Um, there is a Whisper 60 that is controlling both of, this has two outlets, and so these go to the Zis filters. And then I actually have two of these real small little pumps. Um, I got these from Aquarium Co-op, um, not sponsored or anything, but I just really like them. They're very quiet, and they do a fine job of putting out uh, the bubbles and getting the airflow going but they're super, super quiet. Now, the Zis filters honestly are a little bit louder than I'd like them to be, but I will tell you why I like them. Um, I think they do a good job and they're very easy to maintain. All I have to do is unscrew the little cap on the bottom and rinse out that sponge in some water that has been dechlorinated or some maybe some tank water, some old tank water. Um, just so I don't ruin the cycle. And then same thing, of course, the sponge filters, you have to rinse those out occasionally too. But overall, very easy to maintain, and I really like that. So uh, the Zis filters being just a little bit louder than if I had another sponge filter. If I really was concerned about noise, um, or if I was 
if the Zis filters were, were too noisy, I would um, probably just put another sponge filter in these. But I like having two types of filtration in some of the larger tanks. And I think you, uh, the footprint, it's, it's big enough, I think you kind of need that. So let me show you what's going on in some of my other tanks, some other things that I've done. I ex Well, I experimented with these different air pumps. I have a bunch of air pumps because I've, I've been in the hobby for a long time and for, gosh, maybe a year and a half or so, I've been getting additional tanks. So, um, I am, I mean, I paid for all of this stuff. I have two of these. I really should do some management with these cords, but this is the way it looks right now. This is real life, folks. So these are super quiet. I love these. But I need to tell you also what's in the sponge filters. I have changed out the air stone, and I really do think it makes a difference. I've changed the air stone out. So Zoe, my assistant, I'm not sure what she assists with, but she sure is cute. We have tried out lots of pumps and I am not knocking any of these. I really like whisper pumps. I have like a whole family of whisper. I have a whole whisper pump family because I've got, now these are the ones that aren't presently in use, a 10, a 20, uh, what is this, 100. And I used to have this, this whisper 150 on this cube tank. Now this is the tank I've had the longest that is still running. <clears throat> For the longest, I just had one tank at a time. And this tank has probably been set up about six years. Now, this is my first sump tank. It actually has a sump. Yeah, really dark down there. Kind of scary. But um, I used to have this Whisper air pump with this big bubble wall in that tank. This is approximately 12 inch bubble wall. And uh, it was loud than I wanted it to be because this is kind of in the kitchen area of my house and this is more of a display tank more of a feature and um, the bubbles were very pretty but I really felt like they created more current than was needed and so I just put in a small it's actually buried under the gravel I put in a little no clog air stone um, I really like these. I thought about it long and hard before replacing all of my air stones with these, but I have put air stones down in all of my sponge pumps. Sponge pumps? My sponge filters. Yeah, you know those. And uh, I'll show you one of those in just a minute, but um, at first I didn't think it would make a difference, but I would put this, some of my pumps are adjustable um, this is one of the adjustable ones that I'm not using down here. I'm using one of these, I have two of these, and one of them is in use upstairs. And so I wanted to be able to turn this down as low as possible and still get adequate, adequate uh, bubbles. So I, I put the, the no clog air stones in all of my sponge filters that are in use. Every single one. As I clean them out, as I would clean the sponge filters and it would be time to clean them, I would put this air stone in all of them. And in the living room, I'm actually using these little nano, they're called nano air pumps. Love them, love them, they're great. And I've started using the nano air pump in here. And I will tell you, I, that thing is so much quieter than this whisper, but I was also powering a whole 12 inch bubble wall. Well, I just took it out. It was really too much flow. I thought that the sump pump, the pump that's uh, in the sump was making too much flow, but it's really fine. It really is. It was the bubble wall and I didn't realize that for a while. And I'm like, oh, let's make this quieter. And hey, this will actually be better for the fish. It'll be quieter for me. It'll be better for the fish. So it's really a win-win and I need to tuck all this back behind there too, but and maybe hang this up somewhere. But like I said, not sponsored. I'm just a hobbyist. This is what I use. This is what I like. These are things I've learned and figured out recently. So upstairs, 
This is a 29 gallon tank and a 20 long. And so I just have a sponge filter in this one. There's a sponge filter and a hang on back in this one. Um, this is my little nano fish tank. And there are threadfin rainbow fish, green neon tetras. There are exclamation point rasboras and these little Cory catfish. Um, these are Hastatus. Corydoras, hello, hello, hello. Corydoras Hastatus. Yes, he looks not focused. Oh, he looks like we scared him away. So there's Corydoras Hastatus. Most of the Corys are underneath this wood. They are hiding. But <clears throat> here's my assistant, Honey, Honey Bun, Honey, who is um, wanting something to eat probably, right? <laughs> so this is where the quietness comes in because with the adjustable pumps that I have up here, having a really good air stone that doesn't clog, that really puts out a lot of bubbles, even at a low or the very lowest setting is important because I, ha I don't have a decibel meter. I don't have any of that fancy stuff, but I can tell you any of these adjustable pumps at the lowest setting are way quieter than they are at a middle or the highest setting. So <clears throat> that is my story and I'm sticking to it. And these are these guys, oh, I wish they would breed, but you know, in their own time, I'm sure they will. So, okay, next. So right across from that, we have this, these two stacks of 20 gallon tanks. And each of these have just one sponge filter. And running those sponge filters is another adjustable pump that I really like. And again, this is turned down pretty low, not completely, there's the lowest setting, but there's the highest. We really don't need that many bubbles really don't. So again, the air stones in the sponge filters um, put out a lot of bubbles on really a very low setting. So here we have my hospital tank at the moment. This is a Koi Angel with Popeye. It is, oh, I think it's getting better, but it is not a pretty picture. And she is a fighter, he, he or she is a fighter. This pair, um, they are very determined to spawn and this is their second spawn. And they have left eggs, I mean, uh, babies, little wigglers, they're not wiggling very much right now, on the back wall and they keep falling down and there's a little puddle of them at the bottom. I don't know why they did that. They laid the eggs on the heater, which you see still some wigglers on the heater. They moved them a few times. I really thought they had eaten them. I didn't look all around the tank, but then next thing I know, she's putting she's putting them on this back wall for some gosh unknown reason, but they keep moving them. So anyway, parent raising angelfish. Yep, yep, uh, that is something I'm probably gonna be making a video on soon when these little guys start swimming, but um, white clouds, long finned white clouds are in here. And these are Pseudomugal, I think Ivan Safi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And I believe these are salt and pepper quarry catfish. So that is what's going on. These guys are so pretty. They're so small, but they're so pretty. And um, may or may not photograph well or video well but so these are all my tanks right now that is how I have the filtration going and what is happening let me show you the sponge filters and the way that so here is an example of a sponge filter that I have uh, added an air stone to 
and I'll just show you the, take it apart and show it to you real quick. So here is, if, you're, if your um, pump, air pumps are on the floor like mine are, you really need a check valve to be sure that you don't, if the power goes out, your the tubing does, the water doesn't go up the tubing, siphon up the tubing and go all over the floor. That's important. So let me show you what's in here. If we take this apart, if we take this apart, you'll see that I kind of put in a really short piece of tubing and then this air stone on here. It's important that this tubing is really, really short. Otherwise, if it is too long, it might get kinked. I've actually had that happen. And it, um, I had one of these that wasn't really putting out many bubbles and I was trying to figure out what the problem was. And that was frustrating. So that is how I did that. And this, to, I installed the, the no clog air stone and it really does make a difference. So that. Okay, something I meant to show you in the sump under here and i know this is kind of gross and doesn't look very nice but this black tube back here that is pumping it's basically pumping the water there's a bag of media down there there's probably some snails in here whatever but there's a pump it, yeah pump right there and it is pumping the water up and um this tube this black tube used to be touching the back wall of the sump and vibrating really bad i had to take it apart and cut the tube just cut the end of the tube off a little bit but had to make sure it wasn't too much so anyway there's that it's the volume of water is more stable if it's a larger volume i don't have any tanks set up right now under 20 gallons because honestly, it's so much easier to just take care of a 20 or in this case, 40 or 50 gallon tank. Um, if you have the space, I think to some degree bigger is better. I have never really had a really, really tiny aquarium, even though it might seem like that's easier to take care of. I really don't think that a two and a half or five gallon or like really, really small aquarium is gonna be super easy to take care of. Um, on the surface, it may seem like it, but your water quality is going to be more consistent if you have a greater volume of water. Also, even if, um, even if you have a larger aquarium, it doesn't mean you need to put a whole bunch of fish in it. Uh, something that's been on my mind lately is just to understock my tanks, to try really hard to keep them not too crowded, not overstocked. And that's going to make things easier on me because I, they, won't, they won't require quite as much maintenance. And then in the same way, not overfeeding my fish. It's fun to watch them eat and they certainly think they're hungry all the time, even if you just fed them. Which is kind of why these angelfish are up here. They're like, yeah, the light's on. You're over here. Feed me. Like, feed me. Feed me more. Feed me some more. So they would probably eat if I fed them numerous times a day, but uh, it's not just how many times a day, it's also how much you're feeding them at each time. So just, I'm trying to be really mindful to not overfeed my fish, to try to make things a little bit easier on me so that I do not have to change the water quite as often, but still have a very healthy environment for the fish and still have hopefully very healthy fish. And um, if you're wanting to breed, honestly, if the fish are happy and healthy, they're much more likely, they're, I mean, they're, they're gonna have to be pretty happy before they're healthy before they're breeding most of the time. So as you can tell, I mainly keep community aquariums. So that's my experience. This is just based on what I, I mean, I'm just a hobbyist and this is what I like to, to share. This is things I've learned and things that have been on my mind. Just trying to make uh, the maintenance a little bit easier. Wow, they are really chasing each other. It's kind of fun to watch. Um, these Emperor Tetras are really chasing each other. Kind of neat to watch. So anyway, 
um, just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, a larger volume of water is going to be more stable. And even if you don't really stock it very heavily, that's really going to be healthier for the fish, and it's going to be easier on you as a fish keeper. So that's what's on my mind and wanted to share. So hope y'all have a happy new year.